Good evening. Wishing all of our viewers a very happy Holi. But it's going to be difficult in India, specifically with the rising pollution levels across cities. But if that was just about pollution alone, it was a different matter. Much of this is human induced. What are we talking about? We are talking about the toxic cities of India as India is breathing toxic smoke as cities are turning into dump yards. That's what we are talking about. Well, the primary issue right now is what is emerging in Kochi. It's a business capital, as it's called, of Kerala. And what we have seen over the last few days, in a span of one week, there's been pillowing smoke, toxic smoke engulfing several parts of Kochi. Why is this happening? Because a major solid waste management plant, which is Brahmapuram in Kochi, is not functioning the way it should have, is what experts are saying. There was a fire um, at that Brahmapuram waste plant. Now, that is a centralized waste plant, is what experts are saying. And despite the fire um, incident happening on around the 2nd of March, almost a week ago, almost seven days ago, there's been smoke consist consistently every day. Teams are on the ground still battling smoke and toxic fumes. Just about yesterday, the smoke was absolutely severe and we'll bring you first-hand accounts through the show. But we are talking... We are talking about the toxic smoke and the pollution that India is breathing. Mounds of garbage and India's choking cities. This is not just a problem of Kochi. These are repeated instances that are happening in cities across India. We've given you visuals of what's happening in Kochi where even Navy choppers had to be called in. To, to, to try and uh, douse the smoke and uh, the fumes that have been coming from deep inside these piles of garbage that have accumulated over the several years. You've had similar instances, whether it be in Bengaluru, you know, we all know the polluted, sit the polluted lakes of Bengaluru. We have the Belinduru Lake as such. You, uh, we've had similar instances in the national capital region, that's the Ghazipur, which also became a massive um, election uh, rallying point between uh, the warring political parties. But has there been any solution to it? Well, the government claims that they will bring an end to this entire problem in the national capital region before the, uh, by 2024. But is that something that's going to happen? Promises have been made and they've failed. Similar instances in legacy waste management issues, whether it be in DNR in Mumbai or even in Chennai for that matter. These are the challenges that India is battling. Mounds of garbage and India's choking cities. All right, let's try and get you. We, we, we've been joined by an entire panel of guests. Uh, let me introduce Dr. C.N. Manoj, who is the director of Pelican Kentra. It's an organization working on sustainable waste management solutions. They're also based out of Kochi. Thank you, Dr. Manoj, for joining us. I'm also being joined by... Uh, I'm also being joined by... Uh, Diana Emanuel, who is an environment activist from Bangalore. All right, let's uh, first go over to Mr. Manoj. Thank you, Manoj, for joining us at this point. I know we have you only for the first 10 minutes, so I'm starting with you. Dr. Manoj, what is really happening in Kochi? These are terrible visuals that we are seeing. People, residents in Kochi, they are, they are complaining of breathlessness and we'll bring you first-hand accounts in the show as well. They're talking about how they have had to move out of their houses. There are, there's smoke still coming out of that plant as we speak. What is happening in Kochi? What, what are residents really facing at this point? Snehaji, I want to say it's a major disaster of, you know, unprecedented cat catastrophe has happened in Kochi. 
I don't know what to say. I don't want to scare the people there. But in the next maybe five to ten years, we are going to have lacks of patients, neurotoxic liver, kidney with reproductive uh, issues, with asthma. Okay, asthma may be the smallest of the problem we are going to face. This is un un unbelievable uh, destruction which has happened uh, of our, to nature as well as human beings. So what has happened is almost fifty thousand. So we're talking 000, about like, around the, the estimate is around fifty thousand tons of garbage, non biodegradable garbage, including plastic that has been burned. Is that what the estimate is? The estimate, the original estimate in Brahmapuram plant is almost four lakh tons. That's what I understand. Okay, lying there, almost thirty years old legacy waste. Out of which almost 50,000, possibly 1 lakh ton of waste would have got burned. So, the just just give you a small, you know, the, the, the toxicity, what can happen, what has happened. 1 kg of such type of non-biodegradable waste along with biodegradable waste when it burns, it creates around 5 to 10 grams, 10 milligrams of dioxin and furan. So now 5 to 10 milligrams of dioxin and furan is sufficient for killing a person, for killing a person, eventually. Now just, you know, calculate the math. Thousands of kgs of dioxin and furan has been spread across around 30 to 40 kilometers. It is denser than air. It is, has come down. So what do you see as a smoke? Probably that, you know, the soot, the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Human beings have evolved over that. Okay, the right. volcanic eruption, the fire, uh, the, the, the forest fire. I, th I think we can cope with that. Have some good deep breath. The carbon monoxide. No, so are expelled. you saying that the Brahmapuram uh, 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 solid waste management plant is a complete failure? Not is only Brahmapuram uh, solid waste management plant, every centralized waste management plant in the world, you have been talking about India, every centralized waste management plant in the world is a disaster. Only thing is, in Kerala, it actually has, you know, uh, it has extra, well, probably, it, it just, you know, gone to an extrapolation because of the climatic conditions. We have around 70% uh, humidity and 35 degrees centigrade now, due to which there is a good amount of fermentation happening and good amount of methane generated. Well, the government, actually, the government, the corporation has said we don't really know the reason why this fire has happened at this point. The High Court has pulled up the uh, corporation as well as the Pollution Control Board, saying um, uh, it's been a complete failure. Kochi is a gas chamber. But Man Mr. Manoj, please stay on with us. Let me also get in other people in the panel at this point. Uh, Diana Emmanuel, the uh, an environment activist from Bangalore. I also have Liz Biju joining us. She's a student in Kochi and her college is just about one kilometer from where this disaster is happening in Kochi. She'll give us a first person account of what really is unfolding in that particular place. I'm also joined by Bharti Chaturvedi. She's an environmentalist, founder director for Chintan Environmental Research. <coughs> Um, and also Dr. Vikram Jeet Singh, a senior consultant. Well, um, uh, before I go over to um, um, Liz, let me first get, uh, uh, get, get an account from Dina Emanuel. Uh, Ms. Dina, not really a Kerala problem alone, is it? Yeah, hi. Uh, so how I see it is, I think two years before we had a similar situation in Bangalore, Belandu Lake, and it's very unfortunate when we see these incidences repeat itself, you know, because uh, when we realize that the pollutants actually are killing uh, the environment, killing the area around it, and we are uh, still probably years of pollution and years of uh, un uh, unplanned development is what I would call. Because if you see the scale at which all these uh, areas are developing, you will feel that there is no plan uh, which has gone into the... Uh, basic sewage, basic waste management, all those. So it is left to, okay, you develop, you increase to such a pace. When the problem happens, that's when the planning starts. So uh, Belandur had faced similar issues. Uh, all this snowfall is currently under control through certain measures. There are uh, me, uh, basically steps getting taken to clean the lakes, but we are far from it. I mean, to say we may be cleaning one lake, but we may be dirtying many, many more. So we are far from solving the crux of the problem which is having planned sewage planned waste uh, management here. there's no doubt about that about what you're saying bharti chaturvedi let me get you in at this point uh, why is it so difficult for indian cities we are talking about a time when we are even talking about going to space women are you know 
people are looking for living options perhaps uh, in space. Uh, spaces are being explored like never before. Unthinkable things are happening. You have even AI today to absolute new levels. But why is it just so difficult to get our disposable systems in place, our garbage disposal systems in place for India, not just one state? I think the biggest problem we have today is that uh, that there is very little municipal investment uh, capacity and trust in decentralized waste management systems. And there, it is non-negotiable. If you do not have decentralized waste systems, which which were very uh, with very very little waste going to landfills, in fact, the law of the land. Uh, of India only allows the solid waste management rules don't allow wet waste and dry waste and recyclable waste there. And the laws also have uh, EPR mandates for many of the low value plastics. And yet, um, yet all of this goes to the landfill because we don't have enough support systems, financial and other investments and incentives as well as carrots and sticks to actually push for decentralized waste management. You will never, you will continue to have these kinds of catastrophes. I mean, uh, there are thousands of smoldering landfills across India. Um, and as uh, the good Dr. Manoj said before this, um, there's going to be dioxin everywhere and furans. And a lot of this is getting into our food chain. And it's so simple to solve it, but we just don't get municipal, yes. And Chintan, for example, has been working all over Delhi um, and in other parts of the country. It is almost impossible to get space, to get help for compost. Uh, you know, we've got just exactly one MRF. It's as if it's, uh, we're doing as if there's something wrong with decentralized. And in fact, the system has put a huge, uh, a huge amount of investment right. in uh, uh, centralized, even though the Swachh Bharat 2 is now pushing decentralized, but it takes so long for for the adjustment of the mind, you know, for the for even though the Swachh Bharat mission is so powerful and it's, you know, pushed behavior change with municipalities, even though we've had a big shift, but there are still these laggards and they're poisoning the country. Kochi, for example, right. has never done well. And Delhi should never get the kind of rating it does. It should get much lower rating. It well, let's come to that badly. rating. I think that's an important point and you must speak more about it. But before I go to my other two panelists as well, I'll go back to Dr. Manoj because we have him for another two minutes only. He has to leave this show. So before you leave this show, Dr. Manoj, the government says they don't know what really is the reason behind this fire. People say the mismanagement has is not sudden. It's been going on. People living next door to this entire Brahmapuram, they say the toxic waste is something they are living with practically on a daily basis. Has Kerala got this wrong? Has Kerala it model across governments got this wrong when it comes to Kochi's waste management plan? Yeah, it's a great question because just have a bird's eye view on Kerala's waste management systems. You have two set of uh, solutions you can see. Kochi and Ernakulam district, Brahmapuram plant, everyday problem, transportation problem, corruption problem, burning problem. This is one district. Rest of the districts, 13 districts don't have any dump site. This is the only state in India, probably across the globe, where 13 districts, that means almost 400 kilometers wide and 100 kilometers long stretch of land, don't have a dump site. This is what is the beauty of Kerala's waste management policy. Rest of Kochi, we don't have a dump site. If those districts can live like that, why not Ernakulam? Why not Kochi? This is the question. So the policy is not the problem. Unfortunately, you have a dump site. We had a dump site in Calicut, which got closed. Calicut became okay. We had Andrew? a dump site. Snehaji, you were there. You were there in Trivandrum when that Valapinshala got closed, I guess. You, you have seen how it got transformed into a different place, a different stuff. So the problem is the availability of a dump site where people think that they can go do, do whatever they want. Just one more thing to add, since you asked about the solution. This globe is manufacturing 1 million tons of plastic every day. 
this is just not a Kochi problem or an Indian problem. It's a global problem. Forty seconds, Dr. Manoj. I have to go to the other panelists now. So let me just, yeah, you want me to complete this? Yes. So, one million tons of plastic every day. We need to understand that plastic is not recyclable. It has just three levels of recyclability. That's all. Right. That means every day we are ending up one million tons of plastic into the dump site or into the pyre, into the right. burning pyre. Right. This is the problem. Right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Manoj, for joining us, uh, even for a short duration. Let me go over to... Uh, Dr. Vikramjit at this point. Dr. Vikramjit, visuals right in front of us at this point. Cities after cities, metro cities including, are seeing terrible waste management. We've had fires, we've had smoke, we've toxic waste. What does this mean for people living in these cities? Well, good evening. Well, uh, you have to understand that uh, uh, these are uh, when we have these toxic waste burnings or when we have a bad pollution, when we have a bad AQI, bad pollution, uh, they all are because of bad gases. Now, uh, I'll just be very brief. I'll tell you that the toxic gases, they are basically four types. One are the simple asphyxiants where the gases displace the oxygen from the ambient air and they reduce the partial pressure of oxygen and it becomes availability becomes left. So they are uh, like carbon dioxide, the nitrogen and the methane gas. Then there are the respiratory irritants which damage the respiratory tract by destroying the integrity of the respiratory barriers, ammonia, chlorine, uh, hydrogen sulfide. Then there comes systemic asphyxiants, which are one of the most toxic of these, who enter your uh, blood, uh, who enter the body, and when in high uh, concentrations, they, through some mechanism, interact with the hemoglobin and they change the concentration of blood. So these are the right. most harmful ones, like carbon monoxide, phosgene, and the last one, the volatile compounds, which generally do come and they have no irritant effects, but they get accumulated and they right. harm the liver. And, uh, so when such type of uh, this burning of such uh, dumps and there's such gases, the main emission becomes of the second and the third category, which are one of the most high risk categories, the respiratory irritants and the systemic asphyxiant. Mm. And that is why for the people who are living nearby, it is exactly a difficult job to manage. You know, they'll end up with respiratory problems, interstitial lung disease, the asthma, asthmatics will become bad, the cardiac right. patients, the right. kidney patients. In fact, while you're talking about this, about people living in that area, I'm being joined by a student here, uh, Liz Biju. Thank you for joining us, Liz. You're living, in fact, your college is just one kilometer away from this um, disaster that is emerging uh, with Brahmapuram and your house is also nearby. What have you been seeing? Can you tell us? So like uh, for, for the first few days it was like fine because uh, there was fire and then the smoke was like the smoke wasn't affecting us first but then once the fire started to settle down uh, now it's actually affecting us a lot like uh, even today morning yeah our house was actually filled with smoke. Your house so was filled with through smoke. the small yeah and with uh, through the uh, small air gaps and uh, you know ventilation holes uh, smoke enters and there is no way for it to go out. So basically 24 by 7 you're actually inhaling these uh, toxic gases. And then uh, coming to the case of my college, many of my friends who are uh, staying in the hostel, uh, what, from what they said, uh, yesterday night uh, the situation was very serious. Uh, many of them had a lot of issues like uh, asthma attacks, then uh, dizziness, vomiting tendency and so on. So for them, it was pretty difficult. Uh, and then uh, even the corridors were filled with smoke and they had to uh, you know, go to sleep with the mask on. Even after knowing that it won't affect me, it won't help them much. Because wearing a mask won't help you, you know, avoid poisonous gases. Right. So you've heard a young woman in today's India give a first-hand account. It's not a doctor or an activist who's telling you this is going to happen. This is a citizen like us, living her daily life, having a right to dignity and saying this is what's happening. She's living in a house that was full of smoke. Where does one really go at this point? Anyone in my panel who would want to respond? Yeah, please go ahead. I always feel as a, uh, I need to say each panchayat, each municipal, everybody has to take a consensus get the people in somehow for India you know uh, I don't know most of the Indians at least the cleanliness stopped at the boundary of the house 
so there needs to be a very very I know, conscious that we are supposed to do but even beyond that whose responsibility is this is this the government this is the corporation people elect governments right. for what uh, dina you wanted to say something bharti sorry miss bharti you wanted to say something yeah i did i wanted to say that uh, there are three things we need to do uh, the municipality firstly has to create incentives which is to provide infrastructure in every single ward to be able to compost 100% of the waste right there provide uh, spaces for the informal sector to be able to carry out its recycling and give it spaces so that they can work in a safe and clean way and help them to send all that waste uh, for the composting it needs to at least give some running capital for the first 3 or 4 months and it needs to give the option of buying back that compost at least at cost price in 10% otherwise it's not viable at least initially uh, the second thing belongs to the central pollution control boards uh, and the state pollution control board which is that to have an emergency plan uh, when something like this happens because this is not the first time i mean even in the glorious capital of delhi last year uh, between 2017 and 2022 there were 12 big landfill fires so obviously there are much many more in other parts so the pollution control board has to have an emergency plan to save the lives and the health of people the elderly and especially children and that kind of brings me to the third uh, idea uh, or the third thing that we need to do is really to reduce our waste and it's not very difficult in india because for example Right. we need things like refillables and we need to share more things and if we don't do that we can't carry on no matter how decentralized we are with this these growing amounts of waste there's no way to handle it we have to reduce right. it right. and let that be sure and you can't just do it with extended producer right. responsibility and tell the brands take back your plastic right no reduce okay. your plastic please we're very short on time i want to go back to liz at this point liz do you want to tell the authorities who may be listening to you and seeing you at this point do you want to tell anything to them as this disaster happens just right next door uh what i would like to say is like something should actually be done because we have been inhaling this uh, for like one week now uh you know it was in its extreme two or three days uh i mean past two or three days it was in its peak so uh, you know now we are actually concerned about our future health because uh, we don't know how our health is going to be and we know all these uh, you know it, the smell that comes of the burning plastic so it's actually cancerous so we don't know what's actually going to happen to us and you know we don't have another option rather than to smell this so i guess something should actually be done in order to uh, save people in and around us right right i think important words especially from somebody who is literally going through uh the worst time perhaps um any one of us can really dread thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for joining us on this discussion a very important one perhaps hopefully authorities are watching us are listening to us these visuals from cities after cities has been playing through our show and uh, we just hope that we'll not have to do another show like this it's a basic right to life and that's what the constitution has enshrined Thank you for joining us.